Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. related as well as the heroes reborn sequel slash sister show i'm loath and on the hunt for special slash evos with me is as always why is it called a sister show why isn't it called a brother show anyway it's ricky hey <laughs> misogyny <laughs> <laughs> oh we've started off on a really terrible <laughs> note i apologize up for discussion today is episode 320 cold snap Mm. I kind of like Cold Snap, but anyway, we can talk more about why as we go on, so yes. <laughs> Let's just jump right into the recap. The original Air Dates episode is March 23rd, 2009. This was written by Brian Fuller. Yes, that Brian Fuller from Hangable. It was directed mm. by Greg Gantney. I've also wanted to bring up that Swoozie Kurtz is in it, and she knows Brian Fuller because obviously they worked on uh, Pushing Daisies together. But anyway, Cold Snap. Danko considers releasing Tracy, so she'll lead him to Rebel. Elsewhere, Angela seeks help from an old friend. Hero and Ando continue their latest mission chosen by Rebel, whose identity is revealed as... Duh. (laughs) Micah. Oh, thank God we can talk about that, though. I know, right? We got to edit that out of our conversation at least for time. (laughs) There are people, places, and things that you need to know. We got Matt Parkman Jr.'s ability, and we have Millie, a.k.a. Shri Kurt, who actually plays a bigger role in season four. Uh, Matt Parkman Jr.'s ability is activation and deactivation, which is almost as lame as Ando's initial super battery. (laughs) Yeah. And it's both electronic and biological, as we learn. (laughs) (laughs) He's so stupid. (laughs) <laughs> yeah so let's just get into it where do you want to start in the break we will just start at the beginning with another present arriving at danko's house this time it's doyle how he got there so quickly we'll never know well we do know so yeah we'll just go on to that and then move straight on to oh no you gotta you gotta talk about the gift tag that says <laughs> to you <laughs> And I don't think I don't think anything else happens in that episode about them, do, does it? It kind of goes on to the next episode, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it does. So, not not bad. So uh, we will move on to HRG, I guess, because he's next up. And basically, with Nathan out of the picture now, Noah is essentially the last the last hope of um, the old company or Angela, basically, of trying to take down the government from the inside. Danko's and large and in charge and HRG essentially just says um instead of giving them a big fish of you Angela like uh, Angela just obviously kind of sidesteps it. you know I'm I'm no really I'm not really used to him at the moment but if you get him rebel you know he'll probably make you his right hand man and yeah that's Angela for you <laughs> like how she like kind of says you know family is a horrible price to pay for what they're doing because they both lost their kids mm. yeah definitely Angela's kind of last thing is she uses her powers, sees that she's about to get captured and runs off like a boss, just, you know, flirting with some guy to take it, be under his umbrella. And yeah, she gets saved by Peter in the end, I believe. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, but that's, she also calls her friend who's Millie for some money and she just gives her like her umbrella and we kind of don't know why she's that cold to her. But She doesn't, she doesn't give her the umbrella. Oh, she she takes that from the, the umbrella. <laughs> yeah. There is obviously some kind of weird kind of thing going on between them, but we'll learn more about that. So at the end of this, Peter saves her. He saves her by going down the uh, the lift and picking her up, and then they end up at the Statue of Your Liberty. And it ends with him saying, what do you want to do next? Okay, what do you want to talk about next? We will talk about your favourite. Oh, Janice. Making the big return. 
Oh, no, I also wanted to bring up something that I saw while doing my watch. The opening titles are happening and people are getting introduced. They say Rebel, like literally about two seconds later, guest starring Noah Gray <laughs> Cably. And I'm just like, oh, man, you couldn't like leave it till the end. And then just after that, it's Lisa Lackey. And I was like, oh, going to tweet that at uh, Lily. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Yeah. I don't know. What else happens? Yeah, so Janice makes a return in this episode. And she's just as naive as ever. She's listening to the propaganda from the media and doesn't really believe anything they're kind of saying, even though, you know, her husband, she knew her husband could kind of read minds. And obviously she knows her baby can do something. Yes. So, yeah. And then the Danko's men come to take her away. Well, no, actually, they come to take the baby away. Ando does a Hadouken and... (laughs) Hero is powered up again by Baby Touch and Go. The weirdest kind of name to call him. But yes. Touch and uh, Go. Oh yes. <laughs> where, where does the insanity of hashtag Reiki in? <laughs> but I really do like the fact that Hero gets his powers back. But it's like Peter at the at this point anyway, severely depowered. And all he seems to be able to do is stop time. He can't even teleport out. And it's kind of nice to see him kind of going back to his roots and he has to actually get a sweat on to actually do stuff so yeah i do love it it that he stops time but then like he has to like put them in the wheelbarrow yes and then he ends up taking them over to the bus station in what i think is the kind of nicest kind of scene and it reminds me of why I, i like hero so much is Obviously, like before they're about to take or go get off, him and Ando are having a conversation. It's obvious he's got unresolved issues about his mo- like seeing his mother die again for like the second time. And when they end up at the bus stop, it's just him and baby Parkman. And he says, you know, it's all right to be brave. You haven't cried once, but, you know, we'll never let them see us cry. And I think it's a really sweet scene. I just want to say Matt Parkman Jr. is like the cutest freaking TV baby I've ever seen. <laughs> There's probably about three of them, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he probably has a twin. Because that's exactly. actually how they do. Then Matt is with Daphne at the hospital and they have that super yes. Stefani dream. Yes. That was the dumbest use of his power ever. I'm sorry. I know. <clears throat> so <laughs> I think one of the best things that they say is she gets up and she says, um, so you needed to create a believable backstory because obviously she remembers what he said and it was that kind of, you know, her name was Janice and um, she shot herself whilst they were duck hunting like somewhere. And she says, well, you know, you had to come up with a believable backstory. We don't have a believable backstory. And I, at that <laughs> point, it, it kind of got me thinking about the kind of, was it the writers kind of owning up to their own mistakes and that whole kind of meta thing. And it's basically Daphne's quest- questioning her relationship with uh, Parkman and she does what she does best and run off and uh, she runs to Paris and Parkman ends up meeting with her and I remember watching this the first time when he said he flew and then he flies I was like so angry at that point I was just like Jesus Christ he can read minds he can push thoughts into people's heads he He has Isaac's power (laughs) and now he can fly Jesus Christ we've just like depowered all these like super powered people and now you're just giving Matt Parkman Matt Parkman every power ever imaginable when I realized what was going on I thought it was really sweet so yeah yeah it was sweet but it was still and I but I do point to Daphne for saying she didn't want to be a surrogate Janice because nobody deserves that fate (laughs) so yeah she she dies right yeah yeah I had this really big Twitter conversation with Eric Smith his name's uh E Brown 2112 and he had he just went in depth into like why Parkman and Daphne were quite a good fit together and he really did come up with a really good reasonings for everything and he also hated the fact that um Parkman went straight back to Janice and there didn't seem to be any kind of grieving period so yeah if you want to have a conversation with someone about anything to do with heroes I'd suggest him because he's he really seems to know his stuff so yes glad somebody liked it it just was not for me because again they didn't have a believable backstory i actually agree with everything daphne said but it's like why didn't you say this the first time why did you actually try to get involved with him like, mm. that is so needy that that's just such a turn off for me i'm <laughs> fair enough <laughs> anyway so, tracy first up let's just talk about micah being rebel because obviously he's the logical choice for who rebel was had to have been at like i 
didn't even like think about it until like halfway through that it might be Micah. You said yourself that you knew straight away, yeah. But you know, obviously his the pow- his powers means that he can kind of keep tabs on people like at all times. He's a season one and season two regular who hasn't been as regular in season three, and that kind of also makes it significant that he's rebel. And at the end of the day, he always wanted to be a hero. You know, in season one, he was always asking his parents, you know, they should make the Fantastic Four minus one. And he was always telling Monica like the best ways to be a superhero, you know, keeping a mask over their face. And I think... Look where that got him. Everybody's dead. Just say it! (laughs) (laughs) But I also think it shows kind of the kind of generational gap between the younger kind of counterparts and the kind of older... It shows like there's a, a big kind of divide between the kind of certain sections of the heroes um you've got like peter hero and ando and rebel himself like they're all trying to do something with their powers and they're not it's not that they you know open with their powers but at the same time they do what they can to try and help people whereas you've got the kind of rest of them who kind of want to keep everything a secret like nathan and Angela and just mainly the older kind of generation who kind of want to keep them more under wraps And I don't know whether that's something that was, you know, thought about when they were writing it, but that's something I was thinking about when I was watching it. So, yeah. What do you think about that? Like I said, I instantly knew it was Micah when this whole thing was brought up. I love that it's Micah. He's so idealistic. And I think, like I said, the thing about Doyle, about him sending him to Claire, it's like, okay, maybe he didn't know the history between them. Maybe he didn't know the history of Doyle, because if he did, I don't think he would have helped him, because he is so idealistic. He does, he has no shades of gray, if you will. It's very black and white. Mm. And I think this episode gives him the shades of gray that leads into Heroes Reborn, definitely. This this (laughs) situation right here probably taught him a lot. Yeah. And what did we have to bring up from last one? It was the whole um, Doyle. Doyle thing, right? I just don't um, think if he had all the information, he would have actually sent him to clear he wouldn't have wanted to help him, period. That's just my mm-hmm. person. From Fair enough. I don't know if he kind of had all the information, but at the same time, I think he... It seems like he's got a lot of eggs in his basket, because especially if you read some of the comics, he's up to a lot of stuff, and it kind of just seems like he's outsourcing, like, kind of saving people, and he's just getting a name and just sending him off to Claire and he's getting like another name and sending him off to like Rachel Mills and all the while he's still trying to do his own thing which um we'll talk about as the comics come like start speaking more about him so yeah, yeah. um yes yeah. so it, it kind of broke my heart like Tracy he like he want because she looks like his mom and he read her bio and oh my yeah. god politician bios are never true guys I'm sorry <laughs> But I think also he felt that there's a connection. Well, there is a connection between them because she's technically his aunt. And, you know, he he hasn't got that many family members left. Like, obviously, you know, his, his biological, like, immediate biological family, they're all dead. What happened to Monica and the rest of them we find out in the comics. So he's obviously trying to get his last semblance of family together. And that's what this kind of was about. Whereas, you know, Tracy is... Tracy's always kind of been that kind of selfish person who will stab people in the back. Like you kind of saw it when, you know, her and Peter had just been the plane had crashed and her and Peter were together. She was ready to sell him out just so she could get like her life back. But I really like the fact that, you know, she starts saying, you know, if I knew it was you, I wouldn't have led them to you. Yeah, like Michael's you shouldn't do this to anybody. We're, yeah. we're all in this together. You know, it's yeah. a rebellion. Whose side are you on? Definitely, yes. She, yes. she has a redeeming part in this episode, though. Yeah. Much like he did. Yeah, definitely. But um, unlike Nikki, they kind of leave her... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, well, for those of us who just need to refresh her, she freezes herself, causes <laughs> the whole place to, like, turn into ice. She tells Micah to run and stay ahead of the ice. And she basically, like, breaks into people. Yes. Well, no, she doesn't. Um, Danko just comes up and just shoots her in the gut. Because um, she freezes up, a la kind of Iceman, yeah. in a... Ex- or Emma Frost. Yeah, yeah. But then they have that kind of weird thing at the end where the kind of winks at the camera, I think, anyway. So, yeah. Well, no, she literally, Tracy's frozen face winks. Yeah, so. exactly. Oh, heroes. <laughs> We're not going to kill them off yet. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's all that really happened. Yeah. Yikes. This one was a little weaker than the last episode. Mm, Despite me, all my favorite characters being in this one. Fair enough. Okay, so we'll get on to the review. Who's your favorite character? I'm going to go Scandalous, and I'm going to say Daphne. 
Oh. Kylie said all the things that have been eating me up about their relationship. <laughs> Fair enough. What did you think of her send off? Did you like it? That was garbage. It was complete garbage. Yeah? Oh. Woman in a refrigerator. You can't tell me otherwise. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm going to go with Micah because it was good to see him back, I think. And I think he he told Tracy about herself and that's something that she needed. So, yes. I'm going to go with uh, Tracy and uh, Micah because he told her about herself and she needed that. So, yeah. How about you? Yep. I definitely will give that to them for first place. But I kind of actually liked Peter and Angela's time together because she didn't think that Peter was going to forgive her and he had every right not to, but he's Peter. And like, we hadn't really seen that sappy side of Peter in a while. And so it's actually kind of nice. It's one of his redeemed qualities, even though it's brutal. How about scene? Oh, this is brutal. Uh, Oh, it's where Ando learns a new trick and we see him redirect his power into the laser beam that is going to kill a hero in the future. Oh, the Hadouken. Yeah. He Hadoukens it. Yeah. I am going to go with freezing scene. I thought it looked really good. You know, they they can pull the money out of there sometimes. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, how about lines? What what about your favorite lines? Hero to Matt Parker. Can you say guitar? Oh, bless him. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? I'm going to go with... Do you want my advice? Uh, Angela, no. <laughs> so, yes. Not even a little. Exactly. Oh, oh uh, and the second runner up for me comes from Hero 2. Heroes change the world, not diapers. <laughs> Agreed, yeah. sir. I'm also going to have to go with that. I, I haven't got the lines on me, but um, that whole kind of hero talking to Baby Parkman, I thought that was a really sweet scene. And I thought it was something that we haven't seen in Hero for a while. And that kind of, it's, you know, the last time we kind of saw that kind of vulnerability was obviously when his mother died. And it seems like that was so long ago, but it was literally only about maybe about six episodes ago. Whole another volume. And so much stuff has happened in between. You kind of forgot about that. And you haven't, like, obviously he hasn't had the chance to kind of grieve for it. So, yeah. And grade. What are you going to grade this bad boy? Uh, I'm going to go with the C plus, unfortunately. Like I said, even though all my favorite characters are in it, it was just something really off about this. And I think a lot of it had to do with Matt and Daphne. That was just okay. Really, I don't know. Mm. That really dragged the plot down a little bit. It had to be done. I mean, there was nowhere else for it to go, but just ugh. fair enough. I'm going to go with um, a B because I liked Micah coming back. It kind of gave us an answer for Rebel. I was I, apart from Matt flying, I really liked the Daphne and. Uh, Matt thing at the end I you know it was a decent enough I think it was a decent enough send-off I thought it was very nice of you know Matt to kind of give her like that one kind of perfect day left um even and you know the fact that she knew about it kind of makes it even that bit more heartbreaking um and you've also got the vulnerability of Hero coming back into play you've kind of got badass Angela once again so yeah there was a lot of things impressive about this episode so yeah B so we will move on to Trivia, um, yes, obviously, the only thing is that uh, Chapter 7 and Cold Snap are broken up in the title sequence, making it the first ever episode to do it. Usually they're on the same kind of, you see them at the same time, so yes. Mm -hmm, Okay, and shout out to Micah growing up in this episode. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Taxi! (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god, another one of uh, his episodes is coming up that I absolutely love too, the one with Tyler. Oh, fair enough, yeah, We'll, we'll get to that. Next up, we have the graphic novels. We have two of them. Uh, one of them is called Baby Pow- Power, or as it shows, it says Baby Powder, but with the D X'd out. And it basically just feels like a way for... Well, it's got the first ever kind of Nissan Cube, which was the new Nissan Versa, but only really for... Well, no, it was in the in the, in the show as well. But yeah, Hero and Ando are trying to get Matt Parkman Jr. over to old Matt Parkman. Um, and sh- it's them shopping for baby stuff. And it feels like a kind of a comedy episode of a kind of graphic novel. Um, you know, it's just two straight men looking after a baby and not seeing all the chaos that it's causing. So, yeah. <laughs> the only kind of trivia I've got for this is there's a flash novel of the version. 
uh, contains an advertisement for the recruit, which is one of the uh, webisodes. So yes, I, I have trivia. Um, the writer Gil Cassie also did Going Postal, making him the only person so far to be uh, to do two media's, like to do the the webisode oh, okay. and the graphic novel. Um, the art was by Michael Gadels, and then the Easter egg was a behind the scenes image of Jack Coleman, Hayden Panettiere, and Milo Ventimiglia. Hmm, fair enough. Okay, so next up we have Cog, which kind of leads into the next episode. It's basically about a character named Jenkins, and he's late for work. Um, and it's, I know, I know. Um, Jenkins. He basically, yeah, he works for the government, and it's basically his like last day. He's like a good man. He helps this person on his way to work, which kind of makes him later than he's meant to be. He keeps on getting. Uh, miss calls from his girlfriend who just wants to spend more time with him it's just basically him kind of see- seeing that it's going to be his last day on the job because at the end of it he kind of has a note that he's going to give to his superior and um, basically he gets called out to the job and gets killed and taken over by a shapeshifter which leads us into the next episode so yes okay. um, there is no trivia for that Okay, story is by Faz McDermott. The art was by Jason Badala. And then the Easter egg is that we have an image of Chris and Rose in the church looking at the glass, the stained glass window. Cool. So uh, the following people are the ones who joined us for the live tweets. They're either retweeting, tweeting, or faving during the live tweets. We have Shine Die, uh, Rosen underscore Gray, Cynthia667, Lens Mayath. Uh, Mike Schmidt 09, Pingu 112, Maggie's 26, or Maggie's 26, if you are Thank building you. 26. Yes, uh, Karakaku, uh, Demetria Mills 3, English Idiot 101, and Soft underscore Guitar 60. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, we also have emails from our favorite English Idiot 101. Uh, she says, uh, really enjoyed the trio of episodes, mostly with. Uh, Claire's saving the day. Matt and Pete are infiltrate and Danko just being a great villain. Mama Bennett was great and exposed and so was Claire. I'm so glad that Micah is back as Rebel and gets a few of the heroes out. Silas' story is again too far from everyone else's but at least it means no more Luke and Silas starts to get involved into the main story. Volume 4 is a great volume, probably the best and I agree with her. Because I'm really enjoying the Volume 4 watch. And maybe, I've said this, of course, maybe it's only because it's like 10 or 11 episodes. But yeah, it feels really quick. And it works really well together, I think, anyway. So, yes. Looks like it's time for some shameless plugs and self-promotion. We'll start with the show contact info. We here at Prima Tech Files love listener feedback. If you would like to get a hold of us, we have a ton of ways. You can email us via PrimaTechFiles at gmail.com. You can leave us a private message or interact with our posts over on facebook.com forward slash Primatech Files. We live tweet two episodes per week every Saturday starting at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. For more information, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Primatech Files. You can also find us on Clamor, Tumblr, and YouTube by simply searching for Primatech Files. If you enjoy this podcast, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes. What's that? You don't have an iTunes account? That's okay. We're on a lot of podcaster services such as Stitcher and SoundCloud. All you have to do is search for, you guessed it, Primatech Files. We're also on Lib- Libsyn. And if you want to follow our RSS feed there, all you have to do is go to primatechfiles.libsyn.com and bookmark the site to stay up to date with this podcast. Libsyn is spelled L-I-B-S-Y-N, just in case you were wondering. We look forward to interacting with you. If you love our podcast, be sure to check out Southgate Media Group's iTunes provider page to see a list of what other podcasts are hot and trending in our network. Or you can take that one step further and visit southgatemediagroup.com where you can find a full list of our 80 plus podcasts along with weekly blogs and information about all the hosts. With so many podcasts that cover everything from anime to wrestling, there's sure to be tons of podcasts that can interest you. Hey guys, you should know by now that you can find me on Twitter at Lilith Hellfire. If you have a Tumblr, be sure to check out it's LilithHellfire.tumblr.com. And of course, be sure to swing by my blog if you are a pop culture junkie or comic book geek at LittlePopCultureVulture.blogspot.com. I also host several other podcasts on the Southgate Media Group Network. Some of them are The Flashpoint. Queen Consolidated and Channel 52. So if you are into, obviously, DC comic book 
related stuff, be sure to check it out. You can find my writings at tvbinges.com. It's a place for all your binge watching needs and you can also create your own TV binge and we'll help promote it. We do a monthly binge watch, which you're more than welcome to join in. Just go to their Twitter at tvbinges just to find out more information. You can find me on Twitter at Ricky J D S. That's R-I-C-K-Y-J-D-I-A-Z or Z if you're American. All right. That means we're at the wrap-up. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Thomas at Files. We hope you enjoyed our discussion. A short discussion, but a, 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 an invigorating, lively discussion. I, I yes. <laughs> so you do remember to send in some emails. Don't be afraid to interact with our Facebook posts. Like, comment, and share. That's all I have to say. Have a good day. Mm, download the podcast, save the world. <laughs> <laughs>